Imagine a world where your city runs on nothing, literally nothing, just air. Sounds insane, right? Well, in 1906, this wasn't science fiction, it was reality. Picture this, Paris, France. The year is 1906. The city is absolutely obsessed with a new technology that's about to revolutionise everything, and I mean everything. The invention, the pneumatic dispatch system. And yes, it was powered entirely by compressed air, free air, the conju breathe, except pressurised. But here's where it gets wild. This wasn't just power and lights or heat and homes. Paris had literally built an entire underground network of compressed air pipes beneath the city. We're talking about thousands of kilometres of pipes, all delivering pressurised air to factories, homes, street lights, and even dental drills. Yes, your dentist could have been powered by air. So, let me ask you this. If compressed air could power an entire city in 1906, why aren't we all living in pneumatic paradise right now? Why did this technology just disappear? Well, that's because the story of compressed air energy is basically the story of how the future gets, well, murdered. Let's rewind. In the late 1800s, compressed air wasn't just some fringe idea. It was the future. Engineers were obsessed with it. They called it the energy of the future. And honestly, they weren't wrong. Compressed air is renewable, it's clean, and, get this, it's completely free. You just need a compressor powered by something else, like a waterfall or steam engine, and boom, you've got infinite renewable energy distribution. By 1906, Paris had invested millions into this infrastructure. Millions! In today's money, we're talking billions. This was their bet on the future. And here's the thing that'll blow your mind. It actually worked. The system was efficient, reliable, and it powered the city for decades. So if it worked, why did it die? Enter electricity. Or more specifically, enter the people who got insanely rich from electricity. In the early 1900s, electricity was the new hotness. And the people investing in electrical grids, they weren't fans of competition. See, here's the problem with compressed air. It's too democratic. It's free. It's renewable. There's no fuel to buy. No monopoly to control. Electricity. Ah, oh, electricity was different. You needed a power plant. You needed power lines. You needed a company controlling the whole thing. You needed profit. So what happened? Slowly, very slowly, the electrical company started lobbying. They started convincing governments that electricity was superior. And you know what? They weren't entirely wrong. Electricity was more efficient for some things, but that's not why they won. They won because they had money, they had influence, and they had something compressed air didn't have, a business model. By the 1920s, the pneumatic system started being dismantled. Piece by piece, slowly forgotten, the pipes were removed, the compressors were scrapped. Today, most people don't even know it existed. The pipes are gone. The knowledge is gone. It's like it never happened. But here's what really gets me. Compressed air energy is still being used today, just not for power in cities. We use it for drills, for pneumatic tools, for air brakes and trains. It's everywhere, just not where it matters most. So let's talk about the real tragedy here. It's not that pneumatic energy was bad. It's that we chose profit over progress. We had a technology that was renewable, clean and free, and we buried it because it couldn't make anyone rich. Now, I'm not saying we should have stuck with pneumatic power forever. Technology evolves. That's fine. But imagine if we had actually researched it, improved it, combined it with other technologies. Where would we be now? Instead, we got locked into a system where energy is centralised, controlled and expensive. A system designed for profit, not people. And here's the kicker. We're now trying to go renewable. We're building solar panels and wind turbines. We're trying to escape the system we chose. But we're done it within the same centralised, profit-driven framework. We're still thinking about energy as a commodity to be bought and sold. The pneumatic cities of 1906 weren't just about technology. They were about a fundamentally different way of thinking about energy. Energy has infrastructure. Energy as a public good. 
energy as something that belongs to everyone, not just shareholders. So, what's the lesson here? That we should have stuck with pneumatic power? No, the lesson is deeper than that. The lesson is that technological progress isn't inevitable. It's not about what works best, it's about who has the power to decide. And that should terrify you, because right now, in 2024, the exact same thing is happening with different technologies. We're choosing technologies based on profit potential, not what's actually best for humanity or the planet. We're burying innovations that don't fit the business model. We're promoting solutions that make money, not solutions that make sense. The pneumatic cities in 1906 were a glimpse of an alternative future, a future that was different. Not necessarily better, not necessarily worse, just different. Organised around different principles, different priorities. And we'll never know what that future could have been because it was erased. Not because it failed, but because it was profitable to erase it. So the next time someone tells you that the free market always chooses the best technology, remember Paris 1906. Remember that the best technology doesn't always win. The most profitable one does. And that's a lesson worth remembering. Because history doesn't repeat, but it sure does rhyme. So what would you do? If you could go back to 1906 and make a different choice, would you? Or would you make the same bet on electricity? Because that's the real mystery. Not why pneumatic power died, but why we're still making the same choices today.